We're going to have a uniformly positively charged rod. So we have a rod with a uniform positive charge. And what we're going to do is we're going to figure out the electric field that exists at this point right here. This point right here is a distance A from the rod, which has a length L. Now, immediately you should know what the direction of the electric field at this point is. Please point in the direction of the electric field now. If it's a positively charged rod, and we use what type of test charge, Mr. P? Positive. And? I agree it's positive and? Small. Small, small positive <coughs> test charge. So if we were to take a small positive test charge right here, it would be repelled from our positively charged rod. And so the electric field, we know, is going to be to the left. So we're going to figure out the electric field that exists at point where this is point P right here, but we already know its direction is to the left. So we're going to start with the electric field is equal to the K times the integral of dQ over R squared times unit vector R, because this is a uniform charge distribution. It is not a point charge. It is clearly a uh, linear object. So we're going to clearly use the linear charge density. If it's uniform, that means it has a uniform linear charge density, lambda. We need to break it into dq. So let's just take a moment and look at dq. So, so um, r and r squared, this is the distance between um, the point. The point and? The uh, center of. And dq. Right? Uh, so it's going to be the distance from the point you're talking about and dq. So r is just a general position vector. So in this particular case, it's actually going to be x. So this is going to be k times the integral of dq over x squared. And the r unit vector is going to be negative i. We know this because we've already determined that the direction is to the left. to identify the total charge, and we would use a little q to identify a part of it. So that would be the total charge over L. True. So then can you do like the same thing? So that equals like d little q? Or like dq, which would be the, just the charge of this piece divided by DL. It's actually, it would be dl, l would be the length, and I should probably be, uh, I should use the same symbol, I apologize. This, I used l, so I should use the same one there. It's rather than L, it's going to be dx, because that's the direction that we're talking about. So dx. So notice, this dq has a width of dx. And it's located a distance x from point p. So then we can rearrange it, and we can say dq is equal to lambda times dx. So coming back to our equation for the electric field, the electric field then is equal to k times the integral of lambda times dx divided by x squared with our negative unit vector. Which we can actually bring up front, so we should probably do that now. Negative k unit vector. Okay. Uh, Good. The electric field equals then negative k lambda i times the integral of 1 over x squared dx, 
what are the limits on this integral, Phil? Um, the so the question rephrase is x varies from what to what? Like p to like nine. That's okay. It doesn't vary from p. P is just a point. It's not a distance. Um, Captain. Um, a to a plus. It varies from A to all the way to A plus L. So this goes from A to A plus L. So now we need to take the integral. So let's do one more step so it's a little bit more clear what we're going to do right. with the integral. So we have the integral then from A to A plus L of x to the negative 2, because 1 over x squared is just x to the negative 2. So please take the integral, Bailey, of uh, x to the negative 2. I'm sorry, I missed that. I was busy here. So what was it? Over negative 1. And we still have our limits from a to a plus l. So let's see. Uh, we have two negatives here, so that negative is going to cancel. We get k times lambda times i times the quantity 1 over x from a to a plus l, k lambda i, uh, 1 over a plus l minus 1 over a, k lambda i, uh, a minus the quantity a plus l divided by the quantity a times a plus l, just getting common denominator. Oh, uh, let's see, k lambda i, a minus A minus L, just to be absolutely clear. So the electric field then is equal to K lambda I times negative L divided by the quantity A over A times L, or negative K lambda L over A plus times A plus L times I. But here's the thing, lambda and L really should not be parts of our answer. <coughs> lambda times L is equal to what? Just Q. Just Q. In other words, a better description of our electric field is that it is equal to negative kq over the quantity a times the quantity a plus l i. Okay, you ready? Sure. Okay. If, for example, a is much, much greater than l. then L plus A is approximately equal to what, Tyler? Uh, a. A. In other words, then the electric field is going to be equal to negative KQ divided by A times A, I, or equal to negative KQ over A squared times I. Thanks. <laughs> But why can we just assume that... Okay, so the, the point of what we've just done is explain to me why that makes sense. Jenkins. Is it, uh, a is a lot greater than L, L becomes more like a point charge? The farther you get away from it, the more it acts like a point charge. If you get far enough away that L is small compared to A, then it acts like a point charge. KQ over R squared. But uh, do we know whether in our particular example if A is much, much greater than that? In our particular example, which gets to Mohit's question, it uh, doesn't matter. Okay. Right? All we're doing right now is we're not throwing any numbers into it, so we're just saying what, what would it be, and then I'm proposing what would it be if this were much, much smaller. 